Good morning and welcome to Bible and Ear. As today we are going to be going through day 140. We made it 140. So we are going to be continuing in our series of Royal Kingdom, our period of Royal Kingdom, as we had followed through the Adventure Timeline created by Jeff Cavins. Uh, as we go through Bible and Ear, uh, we are going from Genesis to Revelation and we're talking about the Bible because it is the greatest story ever told. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz, and today we are going to be going through 2 Samuel chapter 22, 1 Chronicles chapter 27, and Psalm 41. It's a little bit about each and every one of them. Um, 2 Samuel 22 is similar to Psalm 18. This is a psalm of David written early in the kingship, soon after he was delivered from Saul and his enemies. David reflects on his life, proclaims that the Lord has saved him because he loves him. He can look back on his life and rejoice despite all of his failures. At a certain point, we need to also look back at our lives and see that the many victories that have come along amongst the defeats, and to be grateful what the Lord has done for us, redeeming us from our failures. David understands his brokenness. His sin has been on full display for all people of Israel. Yet he knows that God's strength has helped him and made him great. Uh, First Chronicles, we read about all the army officials under the royal army of King David with Joab as commander-in-chief. And then we go through Psalm 41, a psalm of David for the director of music, a psalm of petition and lament, a blessing on those who consider the poor while he also is being mistreated and afflicted. So read all about that. But we'll start with 2 Samuel chapter 22. David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent men you save me. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise. I am saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled around me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. For his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. The earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the heavens shook. They trembled because he was very angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his canopy around him. The dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, bolts of lightning blazed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the moist high resounded. He shot arrows and scattered the enemies, bolts of lightning and routed them. The valley of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of breath from his nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of the depths, out of the deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not done evil by turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his sight. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure. But to the crooked you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them low. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help I can advance against a troop. With my God I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. 
He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hand for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and crushed them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them completely and they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as the dust of the earth. I pounded and trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of my people. You have, preserved, you have preserved me as the head of nations. People I do not know are subject to me, and foreigners come cringing to me. As soon as they hear me, they obey me. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be my rock. Exalted be God, the rock of my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who puts the nations under me. Who sets me free from my enemies. He exalts me above my foes. From violent men you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading from First Chronicles chapter 27. This is the list of Israelites, heads of families, commanders of thousands, and commanders of hundreds, and their officers, who served the king and all that concerned the army divisions, that were on duty month by month throughout the year. Each division consists of 24,000 men. In charge of the first division for the first month was Jashubim, son of Zabdiel. There were 24,000 men in his division. He was a descendant of Perez and chief of all the arm, army of officers for the first month. In charge of the division for the second month was Dodai, the Ohite. Mikloth was the leader of his division. There were 24,000 men in his division. The third army commander for the third month was Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, the priest. He was chief. And there were 24,000 men in his division. This was the Benaiah who was mighty man amongst the 30 and was over the 30. His son, Amizabad, was in charge of his division. The fourth for the fourth month was Azael, the brother of Joab. His son, Zebediah, was his successor. There were 24,000 men in his division. The fifth for the fifth month was the commander Shamhuth, the Israelite, there were 24,000 men in his division. The sixth, for the sixth month was Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Dekoite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The seventh, for the seventh month, was Helez, the Pelonite, an Ephraimite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The eighth for the eighth month was Sebekai, the Hushathite, Zerahite. These were the 24,000 men in his division. The ninth for the ninth month was Abizer, the Anathothite, a Benjaminite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The tenth for the tenth month was Maharai, the Netophathite. A Zerahite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The 11th for the 11th month was Benaiah, the Pirithonite, an Ephraimite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The 12th for the 12th month was Heldai, the Netophathite, from the family of Othniel. There were 24,000 men in his division. The officers over the tribes of Israel, over the Reubenites, Eliezer, son of Zikri, over the Simeonites, Shephatiah, son of Maka, over Levi, Heshabiah, son of Kamul, over Aaron, Zadok, over Judah, 
Alihu, a brother of David, over Issachar, Omri, son of Michael, over Zebulon, Ishmaiah, son of Obadiah, over Nephtali, Jeremoth, son of Azrael, over the, over the Ephraimites, Hoshea, son of Azariah, over half the tribe of Manasseh, Joel, son of Padiah, over the half tribe of Manasseh and Gilead, Edo, son of Zechariah, over Benjamin, Jeshiel, son of Abner, over Dan, Azarel, son of Jeroham. These were the officers over the tribes of Israel. David did not take the number of the men twenty years old or less, because the Lord had promised to make Israel as numerous as the stars in the sky. Joab, son of Jeruah, began to count the men, but did not finish. Wrath came on Israel on account of his this numbering, and the number was not entered in the book of annals of King David. Asmpheth, son of Adil, was in charge of the royal storehouses. Jonathan, son of Uziel, Uzziah, was in charge of the storehouses in the outlying district, in the town, the villages, and the watchtower. Ezri, son of Caleb, was in charge of the field workers who farmed the land. Shimei, the Ramathite, was in charge of the vineyards. Zabdi, the Shifite, Shifmite, was in charge of the produce of the vineyards for the wine vats. Baal Hanan, the Gedarite, was in charge of the olive and sycamore fig trees in the western foothills. Joash was in charge of the supplies of olive oil. Shitrai, of Sharonite, was in charge of the herds grazing in Sharon. Shaphat, son of Adlai, was in charge of the herds in the valleys. Obal, the Ishmaelite, was in charge of the camels. Judea, the Maronathite, was in charge of the donkeys. Jazz, the Hagrite, was in charge of the flocks. All these were the officers in charge of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of insight and a scribe. Jehiel, son of Hakmoni, took care of the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor. Hushai, the archite, was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, son of Benaiah and by Abiathar, Joab was the commander of the royal army. Here ends our second reading. Our final reading comes from Psalm 41 for the director of music of Psalm of David. Blessed is he who has regard for the weak. The Lord delivers him in times of trouble. The Lord will protect him and preserve his life. He will bless him in the land and not surrender him to the desires of his foes. The Lord will sustain him on his sickbed and restore him from his bed of illness. I say, O Lord, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice. When will he die and his name perish? Whenever he, one comes to see me, he speaks falsely. While his heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it abroad. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, A vile disease has beset him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friend, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, O Lord, have mercy on me. Raise me up that I might repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Here ends the reading. Psalm 41, like many of the laments, uh, well, I mean, it starts out uh, similar to the way it ends, um, talking about the blessings of the Lord um, and also how those who uh, take care of the poor will be blessed. Those who protect and preserve life will be blessed. And at the end, that the praise be to the Lord, the God of the everlasting. Um, and then in between, the lament on his life, wanting to have mercy on him and that God would protect him against his enemies and would fight on his behalf. And they want the worst of him. They're vile. They don't trust him. They lift their heel against him. And yet, 
He trusts that God will be the one who will be the one who provides uh, real judgment uh, for it all. And so we, like David, remember that God is the one in charge and we are not. Uh, we also see God in charge of the armies as we talk about the division of the armies and the many the many different players that are in here. And lots of these names have continue to be repeated over and over and over again in these books. And so I hope you're starting to hear common names, like one like Benaiah, who who uh, seems to be this warrior who fights. Uh, he's the head of the 30, and he's got a lot of tasks that he's been given. Why? Because of his bravery and his might. And then lastly, we see David's song of praise in 2 Samuel. This is a very long psalm of praise, and thanks be to God for all the things, for his life, for his pursuing of his enemies and crushing enemies, and it's uh, one big psalm. Uh, so it's no different than we see in our Psalm uh, 41 for today. These are both psalms um, praising God. Uh, this one more about praise and the other one a little bit more about lament and petition. But either of them lift up God and lift up those uh, who walk alongside of God. And we just ask that we might be like that, uh, that we might uh, sing the songs of praise that we have for our God as David does. Uh, because all glory and honor and praise is God's ultimately. And we do this also in prayer. Just uh, let us pray together. Father in heaven, we do give you praise and we give you glory. We bless your name. We praise your name. Holiness and all glory is yours. God, preserve us from resentment. Preserve us from corruption. Preserve us from despair and discouragement. Help us to be filled with your courage, to be filled with your grace Therefore, able to let our lives be signs of praise and signs of thanksgiving before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just ask that you might uh, continue to pray for me as we go through this Bible in a year. Uh, and I pray that you might, as you go through, learn a little bit more about the character of God. Uh, that you might grow in wisdom and understanding and fear of the Lord so that your days might be many and your days might be joyful. Uh, for joyful is the presence uh, that we have joy filled when we're in the presence of God. Have a blessed day.